the best job ever. I'm not kidding. It really was. This is an update to the playlist, my job as a day laborer. 1997 to 1999, rest in peace. I was running errands today and I went by the spot. I know it's gonna sound kind of crazy because this whole channel is set up for how to make a living without a job and to talk about those things. But I'll give you the context and I'll let you know what happened. This was toward the last year I was in the labor pool, temporary job, staffing job type situation. And I remember this job. I'll never forget it because I went to the labor pool and this was coming from a really shitty ass job the day before. I'm talking about putting tar on the roof. So I go up and I didn't want to do it. You know, I had a little money and that lazy do nothing side was saying, hey, don't, don't go. But I went ahead, got my lazy ass out of bed and went in there at 4.30 in the morning after 12 hours of putting gravel and rock and shit on the roof. So I'm in there and it was really somewhat kind of interesting because it wasn't a lot of people in there. Normally it's jam packed. I'm talking about jammed pack. I'm sitting there and I'm there maybe 30 minutes, right? And then the guy, he just like, yeah, you, I got something for you. And he calls, he pulls up to the window and he says, yeah, you know, you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't do drugs. So this company is very particular. You know, they've sent everyone that we sent out there back. So, but they have a lot, you know, and he said it was a cush job. That's what he said. He was like, it's a cush job. All right. So he gives me the ticket and I go out there because the place was right across the street from the East Point Marta Station. So I go straight to the Marta Station, find out where I have to go, look at the schedule, and the place is on Ellsworth Industrial. So I roll in there, and it's about 8.30, and they're already there, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Very, very active place, huge company, huge. So I meet this guy, Carl, and, he said, and I say, hey, you know, I'm Glendon, I'm from the labor pool. And he said, oh, and he kind of looks at me like, oh, and I didn't want to say nothing, but you know, I could tell because he, he was just kind of shocked. So he takes me in the back and we're going through the warehouse and there's all this stuff. And little did I know I'd be seeing my future. It's just so crazy. So I'm going through there and he takes me to this large section in the warehouse. And on one side of the warehouse are all of these boxes that are coming in from China. And then there's these other spaces where they want X amount of product to go into certain slots because they're gonna go all across the country. And he told me how he wanted it. And he said, you know, this is what he said, I'm not a babysitter, because Carl was a little country. I'm not a babysitter. I don't babysit grown children. I just don't. So here are your instructions. They're written down. I'm going to do my job. I'll check on you later. I said, okay. And I just sat there and I thought, this is the first damn job I've had with this place where I was just left alone. It was like Christmas. So I look at his instructions and I look at how stuff's going and I realize there was a critical flaw to the logistics. So I spent an hour moving shit around, moving tables and created better flow. Because it, it was like that old adage, measure twice, cut once, it was that type of deal. So I reset everything up, created an assembly line, put stuff where I needed it, because I was just like, hey, he's like, you know, he doesn't babysit grown children. I'm like, gonna have fun. So I go ahead and I set it up, then I start processing the things that they want, and then I had to make some more adjustments. So at the end of the day, I'm feeling a sense of accomplishment. I'm feeling a sense of pride. And this was basically because I was left the fuck alone and I had responsibility and I was allowed to do it my way. So I'm humping, I, there's a radio, I'm putting it on V103, I'm listening to whatever the hell I want to. I'm just like, this is, you know, understand. Context and perspective. 
the roof the day before I was on the hot ass roof four stories up in the air down in bumfuck judges Georgia sweating my ass off and here I am in this place and it, it, it was just like a dusty old warehouse but it was like going from heaven to hell so you know at 4 30 that's like hey if I don't come back you know this was cool right so Carl comes in at 4 30 and he, he walks in and he just looks and he's just stunned and he's you change stuff around and then I, then I proceeded. It's like, well, Carl, this is how it goes. Well, I just noticed that there was some inefficiencies. And this is the way I'm speaking, right? Now, he's used to getting labor pool guys. And he was just, you know, he just had that puzzled dog look on his face. Then he says, hold on. So he goes and gets this little lady. And apparently I found out later she owned the company or was one of the owners. And he comes in and he says, look what the labor pool guy did. And the lady was just, he's not from the labor pool. They're fucking idiots. They're drug addicts. They're derelicts. He shaves. He's not from the labor pool. I told you, we don't have any money in the budget to hire anybody. And then Carl's like, no, 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 no. Hey, from the labor pool. I'm trying to tell you. I just had to show you this because this is amazing. And I'm just sitting there like, they're just shocked. They're just shocked. So Carl says, hold, you know, hold on. So he goes into the office and he calls the East Point Labor Ready and says, they wanted me for the next four months. I was like, really? So as I'm leaving, he signs my ticket and I have worked about eight and a half hours. He puts 15 hours on there. 15, I'm just like, because some, some guys would do that. If you worked eight, they would pay you for nine. If you worked eight, they pay you for 12. You know, it's just a way of maybe tipping. Or, you know, increasing your daily take. So he just slapped me on the back. I'll see you tomorrow. So I go in there and I'm doing this stuff. And I do this for four months. And I learned so much about import and export and where stuff is going. And I'm looking at Manifest. And it, it literally was the best job I ever had. Because many of the things that I learned there, I apply to my own business later. Now this is where it gets really interesting. Across the street, there was this company by the name of Horizon Pacific Home. So at the end of my four months, because they were moving that warehouse to another, and that was the reason for all the shipping and stuff, and Carl comes in, hey, I talked to my friend across the street. Go over there and talk to him. And there's this old wizzled guy named Walt, right? He's missing all of his lower teeth. He looks like hell. So I go over there and talk to Walt, and he's like, Carl says you're a good guy. And we're hiring. So if you want a job, you got it. Poop out of the labor pool, never to return. Then that's where I learned even more about imports from Indonesia. Uh, like I give you an example. We used to sell this teak cabinet. Uh, back when people had those fat ass televisions, so it was an entertainment center. The manifest said 185. We go get on the truck, take it to the short show, put it, ah, take it to the store, put it on the showroom floor. That sucker was $9.99. Then I remember seeing it marked down to $7.99 on sale, and I was like, oh, yes, yeah, on sale, all right. Just saw this over and over again. Learned about container loads and shipping and how half the shit sometimes in a container will come by broke, will come to you broke, especially if it was pottery, clay, and stuff like that. And I stayed there for about nine months. And then went to T-Mobile and boom, I was out of that game. But one of the things that stands out from that story was I got freedom to do a job like I wanted to. And I think that's what anyone wants, their freedom to do a job the way that they want. But there's so many constrictions and there's so many rules and regulations. I literally changed around. I made it better. And apparently they were open to it because I know some people, if you go to a, a job and do this, you'll get fired, even if it makes sense, which just shows you how jacked up some companies are. But I'm over at Horizon Pacific Home. I got my little shirt, working my little regular gig. I mean, sometimes it was overtime, but the money was bullshit compared to the experience because when I got into my own business and when they started speaking container loads, manifest coming from Indonesia, coming from China, I knew exactly what they were talking about. 
So I looked at it as I got paid to learn how to run a business because between those two places, I learned so much about import, export, shipping, pricing. It was insane. And that's why it's the best job I've ever had because I took those lessons and I used them and I still use a lot of that stuff today. Then I, I found out how companies are built. Like the owner of Horizon Pacific Home, his family actually owned a big carpet place up in Dalton. And when they sold it, the rumor is he got like 36 million and he opened up this store. And I think there's he's still running some kind of thing over there, I'm not sure. But it just shows you how money doesn't sleep, how money is just, if you want money, you have to circulate it. And I was sitting there looking at these manifests and I'm like 1.5 million, 2 million, 3, just all this money. And it was just everywhere. And I was like, how can I get some of my little brown hands on it? And I just, you know, it was a sponge. And it, it's just funny that such a suck ass job, if you think about it, was so beneficial to my future. Because I think part of that was I got to the point where I was able to kind of start walking into places and people would just like refer me and I didn't really have to look for jobs. And then rent a crate and the rest is history. So as jacked up as a, that time was in my life, there was so many lessons learned because I had to perform to survive. So when I got that commission only sales job, it wasn't really that scary. I was used to having to perform to survive. And that's one of the things about getting into something that's really easy or a system that's really easy. It'll work for a while. I'm not going to discredit that. But if you get to a point where you have to perform and you don't know how, and I, I just look at adults and people who've been taken care of and they get later on in life and they can't figure out simple shit because they never had to. And I don't know if part of your brain dies if you don't use it. I'm not sure, but it seems that way. It really does. But that is one of the coolest experiences ever because I look back and I was over there today and I just saw it and all the memories came back because it's a different company now. Now, I, one part that happened when I was working with the, with the company with Carl, they let me go on a truck to the apparel mart because they had a they had damn near half the floor. That's how, I mean, they were, I mean, they were importer exporters. I was just amazed because we were pulling stuff out, putting it on the floor. They had hired some other temps. And this is where I started to learn all temps are not created equal because the guys that was working with the other temp agency were making like twice what I was making. And I was like, you know what? Don't hate the game. Don't hate the player. Learn the rules so you can win. I said, next time I'll just put that feather in my cap and I'll, I'll hold on to it. And it, it was just amazing. It was just really, really amazing. Now, part of your journey as a hustler, an entrepreneur, you got to learn how to sell and you have to learn how to run a business. So what I'm going to do is give you a special. Since you've made it this far at the end of the video, what you're going to get is five minutes with me. You have five minute phone call and 30 days to 2500. The version that's geared on how to sell stuff online and offline. So. Around here somewhere will be the eye because they move it. It used to be up here, then it was down there. So <laughs> I can't point to it because a few months from now, it may not be where I'm pointing. But look for the little bitty eye. It looks like a little lowercase eye. Click that, get your special, and then we'll get you set up and we can rock and roll. And there'll be more stories next Tuesday.